many a friends, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contract, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God on the height, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. <coughs> Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that no tempest may disturb us, for you have set us fast on the rock of Apostle Peter's confession of faith. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, I exhort the prepsters among you as a fellow presbyter and witness to the sufferings of Christ, the one who has a share in the glory revealed. Tend the flock of God in your midst, overseeing not by constraint, but willingly, as God would have it, not for shameful profit, but eagerly. Do not lord it over those assigned to you, but be examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is revealed, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. The word of the Lord. Our response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful water he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. 
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld should not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Our readings today are very well connected. I'll start with the Gospel. In the Gospel, Peter confesses who Jesus is, and Jesus tells him that he is going to become the ruler, the one who is going to be in charge. In other words, as we would say today, he is the first pope. He has authority now. The first reading is where Peter himself talks to his priests, says in the scriptures, presbyters, meaning priests. And he says, be careful how you exercise your authority over your congregation. What do the readings mean to us today when we look at it? The readings today speak about authority. Do we have authority? Do we use it correctly, justly, and charitably? What is our attitude towards authority? Just authority. What is our attitude towards it? And how do we respond to different rules and regulations that come out of Rome concerning our religion? How do we respond to that when the Pope exercises his authority that was given to him by Peter? Maybe something we can reflect on during the rest of the season of Lent. Also, there's a personal note to the first reading for myself. As I reflect on the authority that I had How well did I exercise that authority in the classroom and in the parishes and in the hospitals that I ministered in? How well did I lead people to heaven? There were times when I misused my authority. There were times when I abused my authority. Never abusing people but I use my authority in the wrong way. It gives me a chance now to reflect on that and to tell God that I'm sorry. I can't apologize to those people because I don't see them. They may not even be living. I can only say to God that I'm sorry for not having used my authority in a proper and sound and charitable way. And that may be what we and what you can also do if you have authority as a parent, as a boss, as an elected official. Have you abused your children, 
with your authority? Have you abused the elected officials by the way you've acted towards them? Something we can think about in our personal lives and in general, using authority. It's very important in our, our world today. So let us reflect and pray over the proper use of authority. For our Holy Father, the rock of our unity, whose faith never fails to strengthen his brethren, for all his intentions, for his health, and for the success of his ministry, let us pray to the Lord. That the words and deeds of Christians may be eleven in the dough of the world, raising its ideals to those of life, justice, and morality, let us pray to the Lord. For our bishops and priests, that they may give God's flock a shepherd's care, living as examples for the people, winning for themselves an unfading crown of glory, let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord may himself shepherd those who are in the dark valley of illness, diminishment, depression, or grief, giving them courage and an anointing of hope and joy, let us pray to the Lord that Jesus, who gave the power to bind and loose to Peter, may loose our dear deceased loved ones from all their sins and give them a place at the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. This morning we're asked to pray for Fred Joseph, Carol Fernandez, Richard Caffrey, Gertie McNally, Jim Waters, Donald Bedell, Tim Wright, William Shaviano, Kelly Walker, Joe Lazari, Eric Babin, Joe Kassar, and all those on our prayer list and book of intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for the cause of Jean-Claude Collan, founder of the Maris for Sainthood. We pray to the Lord. Sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God. 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that in our taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, your spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by the divine peace, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 